In this tutorial, I'm going to show you five things which you should avoid in Photoshop because they limit you greatly. Let's start with number five. It's hue and saturation. A lot of people convert their pictures to black and white simply by using hue and saturation and then by desaturating the picture. This is fine, but it doesn't give you much control at all. So let's delete it and try something different. Click on layer adjustments and then go to black and white. Notice all the different channels that you have right here. You have the reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues, and magentas. Play around with them to see what they do. So let's try a few of them. Notice that if I use reds, the skin tones change. Same thing with yellows. And notice that the eyes are changing when I play around with the cyan. There you have it. Now, let's go to our next one. A lot of photographers like to apply a vignette to their pictures. We can go to Filter, Lens Correction, and then click on the Custom tab and locate your vignette, which is right here. Now this gives you two different options, which is great, and this is not a wrong way of doing it, but it is still not as good as doing it manually. So let's see what this does. You can simply slide the slider to the left, and then you can adjust the midpoint. Let's go back. And for some photographers, this is just fine. However, there is an easier way, or should I say, a better way, a more effective way of doing this. So let's cancel out and see how that's done. To add a vignette manually, let's create a new layer. We're actually going to create quite a few new layers. Once you have the layer, make sure that your colors are set to black. Then select the gradient tool, hold the shift key, which is going to help us create a straight line, and then draw a line. Notice that we have messed up, but that's fine. Go to the top menu right here and click on Edit the Gradient. Then select the second one, which is Transparent, as you can see. And then let's delete this layer and create a new one. So let's try again. And just keep in mind that you need your layer to be transparent. Or should I say, you need your gradient to be transparent. Shift, hold, and drag. And notice that you have a nice shadow right here. But this is not good enough, so I'm going to undo it and try again. I need a bigger one. Let's see. This is much better, but we are not done. Click on the Move tool, and then click Control-T or Command T if you are using a Mac and notice that this is now outlined. At the top click on switch between free transform and warp modes. This is going to give us these little boxes right here. Now what we're going to do is we are going to drag the anchors across until we create a vignette. Click and drag I'm holding the space bar to move around. We can do it here. We can move this out. Once you're satisfied, hit enter. Notice that we have made a mistake right here. I'll click control T and then I'll click on the same tool again and I'll just drag it around. Hit enter we are going to do the same thing to this side or you can simply replicate this by hitting control J or command J which is going to duplicate your layer then I'm going to click on it drag it here and then go to edit transform and flip horizontal now I'm going to move it to the right You can do the same thing for the top and the bottom. I think you get the point. So, let's move on. Number three on my list is over-retouching. 
A lot of the times people simply use filters to retouch their pictures. Sometimes they use the blur option, sometimes they use surface blur. And surface blur I see a lot. So let's see how that's done. I have duplicated my layer and then I'll go to blur, surface blur, zoom in to see what you're doing, I'll adjust the radius and perhaps my threshold and then I'll click OK. Then you can erase all the parts that you do not need. This is something you should definitely avoid and many photographers tend to leave the hair as well just as it is here. If somebody can recognize what kind of a filter you are using then it says that you are not trying very hard to create a beautiful piece of work. So let's delete this. So what should we do? Well, there are many ways to retouch a picture. And um, let me show you one of them. Let's do Control J, which is going to duplicate our layer. Zoom in. Usually what I do first is I use the patch tool or the healing brush tool to remove any imperfection a model might have. Then I can duplicate my layer and believe it or not you can go to filter blur and use surface blur just don't use it by itself. We'll apply this and then I'm going to hold the ALT key on my keyboard and I'll click on this little icon at the bottom that says Add Layer Mask. The ALT key is going to invert my mask bringing it back to the original state. Now I'm going to use the brush tool. You can hit B or simply select the brush tool. I'll make it smaller. I'm going to use white in my foreground and black in the background white is going to add and black is going to subtract. I'll set my opacity to let's see 35 and then I'm going to start painting. And I'm going to paint only the areas that I think need retouching. Once I'm done, I'm going to select my two layers by holding the Shift key and then I'll click Control E or Command E if you are using a Mac and this is going to merge my layers. Then I'm going to sharpen it. I'll go to Filter, Sharpen and select Smart Sharpen. You can decide how sharp your image should be. And there you go. Before and after. Not a big difference and it's not over retouched. Number two on my list is spot coloring. What is spot coloring? Well, let me show you. Hit Control J or Command J if you're using a Mac and that's going to duplicate your layer. This time we are going to use hue and saturation, something I advised you not to use, but that's fine in this case. And this is going to make our picture black and white. And notice that I have this mask right here. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to use my brush tool. Then I'm going to use white to add and black to subtract. This time I need to subtract, so I'm going to hit the X key on my keyboard, which is going to swap these two colors. And then I am going to start coloring in. Spot coloring is when you convert your picture to black and white and bring back some color. This is something that I often see in pictures and it looks really cheap. You should always avoid this. If you do decide to do spot coloring, make sure that it complements your pictures. Whatever is in color is going to stand out. And if it doesn't need to stand out, if it's not the main focus in the picture, then don't convert it to color. Number one thing on my list that you shouldn't be using in Photoshop is filters. 
And what I mean is using filters as they are. So let's duplicate our layer and then go to Filter, Filter Gallery. We're going to zoom out to see our image. And then I have Cutout selected. You can play around with numbers of levels, edge simplicity, edge fidelity, or you can select any of these other filters right here. Let's use this one and click OK. This might look cool to somebody who is not trained in this field, but this is very unprofessional and um, very cheesy, if I could say. So don't use filters as they are. I strongly recommend that you create multiple layers, apply different filters to them, mix them up, bring something else into Photoshop, some crazy textures that you have collected and scanned, and then create a cool piece. But to use filters as they are never looks good.